thumbs up. Perfect. All right. start here in just another second. Hope everybody out there is uh, doing well, and I'm sure everyone's feeling a little cooped up, but uh, hope everyone's hanging in there just like we are, and uh, looking forward to some better times ahead, that's for sure. Hi, AJ's mom. <laughs> Hi, Ma. <laughs> Um, I think this might be one of the first times we've done it by itself. I believe so. Yeah. 
um, which is fun because it, it, it offers the chance to experience something uh, a little different, but not too far off from uh, those Rieslings um, and even some of the British meters that we've had in the past. Um, uh, we start right into this one. This was uh, an interesting wind, not only on the nose, but uh, straight through into the palate. And I think it makes uh, a really easy task for um, the guys over at Reverie to, to come up with a pairing with this one. Um, very, very easy drink. Uh, you'll notice initially up front, it's a very clean wine. Um, not too much going on on the nose, but there is a very, um, very nice light apple and citrus tone, um, definitely leaning towards a, a mineralistic character. Um, so if you ever think about uh, metals or even a vitamin that you might smell, um, it tends to be somewhat of a mineral characteristic. Uh, but goes right into the palate, uh, very. Very, very refreshing. Um, still on the dry side too, but um, a very nice apple, um, kind of a light floral characteristic, almost like an orange blossom coming through there as well. And how's Gary today? Yes, hi. Um, hi everyone. Uh, thank you, Mike, for inviting Ravri again here. And this time I bring Nelson, who is a cheese maker, also cheesemonger. At Reverie. So if you ever visit us at a Reverie in Chautauqua area, you'll see Nelson there and he also taking, is taking care of the cheeses and making some mixed cheeses that we sell at the shop. So um, uh, everything you can find on the website. So uh, the first one, um, I really love this uh, Chenin Blanc. It's very, uh, it's great uh, wine for springtime, mm -hmm. you know, so it's a day like this. Uh, uh, something. It, I really love the crispness, the bright acidity, this, uh, just right for uh, spring and summertime wine. And uh, this is perfect with any fresh goat cheese. However, today uh, we pair this with Boucheron. Boucheron is actually a log shape, shape uh, goat cheese uh, from France in the uh, Poitou area, which is in the center, central region of France. And um, in the, about 728 AD, the Arab invaded France, and then when they uh, lost the battle and they had to travel back, they left all these goats, and that's why this cheese uh, making, goat cheese making, started in France. So bouche uh, mean log, and then this is a very ripe uh, goat cheese, and you, as you can see now, you have at home the uh, this, uh, this this uh, uh, portion of it. Which is cut from this log. I only we only have this piece left. Um, so uh, you see under the rind, this is a very creamy part. You'll see it also in your disc at home, right? And then uh, the way you cut it, you can cut it into section like a quarters, and then you can quarter it again, uh, so it become triangle like you see in this uh, uh, on on the plate. So uh, uh, this cheese has a very uh, a creamy, pungent aroma, but chalky and basey at the center. I think this wine is great to kind of uh, complement and wash that uh, the creaminess and the uh, richness of this uh, goat cheese. So I hope you enjoy that. And normally this cheese I will uh, will pair it with honey, but this time just I'll just pair it as it is with this wine. So it's a really great uh, springtime cheese. Oh, that, that So uh, I see we have uh, Anne is on the uh, on the messages, and I can't can't help but first of all I, I'm, I know Anne wants to say hello to everybody. She couldn't make it tonight, uh, but I also cannot have goat cheese without thinking about Anne because any, all of the club members know that we often have goat cheese with our wines, and Anne is is our our local uh, goat cheese fanatic. So uh, cheers, Anne. We're thinking of you. Cheers. <laughs> Brings out texture in both the wine and the cheese. It gives a little bit more depth to the wine, honestly. But that is a nice cheese. Awesome. Thank you. On to the next one.
slide is Blue Moon Rising. Kind of a different style of wine for us. Uh, it is, uh, we wanted to do something that has a touch of, 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 just a touch of sweetness, but it's kind of reminiscent of a really uh, buttery Chardonnay, but without the, the bite or the edge. Um, so that was kind of what we were going for with this. It's just, a, it is aged in oak, uh, but briefly, just enough to give it a kind of a creamy texture, which we thought would be really fun considering we were pairing with cheese. Um, and I think you'll notice, uh, we struggled a little bit when we were tasting this, putting uh, lots of different notes together, but uh, personally, I came up with grilled pineapple. AJ, what was, what were your I think every time it changes. Um, honestly, I mean, any day, depending on uh, how you're feeling that day, it's going to go a little differently, in all honesty. Um, but I think that's the fun of it. Um, you know, this kind of kind of takes us back to our New York wine roots. Um, you know, a little bit, a little bit of a sweetness coming with a little bit of a barreling, um, and it makes for a fun drink. Um, I can't say that I was around back in the the early wine days. Of New York, but um, you know, I think this is going to be an interesting one for those out there. Um, I think Rico, you probably could have taken this a million different ways. Um, I, I honestly think you guys uh, probably had a lot of fun with this one, but um, no, pineapple is is right there. Um, you know, even a little pear. We're always going to be brought back to the apple a little bit with the whites, but um, to be honest with you, I think it kind of kind of hits it right with fruit notes. Um, and only the fruit notes. There's that crisp kind of caramel note coming through the back end, and a little bit of floral note. But um, man, it's it's a, it's a fruity wine. It's it's interesting. So what do, you, what do we have for our so, uh, treat for this? I uh, we pair the uh, Moon Moon Rising with chamomilla and uh, palm palm with quince base, and Nelson will uh, show you chamomilla. This is. Uh, this is the chamomilla with natural rind, and the, the way it's made, we uh, infuse the, the 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 curd or the milk the milk with uh, organic chamomile flower tea, and then um, uh, that's the natural rind uh, chamomilla. It's not natural chamomile flower. And then um, we also pair this uh, wine with tom. Tom is this. Uh, with basket weave, uh, rind, natural rind as well, organic grass-fed milk. Uh, Tom won um, a gold in New York State and also winner of ACS, American Tea Society in 2019. And uh, we pair it with Twin Space from Johnson Estate, which is our friend there in the Westville area, in, West, um, in uh, Chicago County. Yeah. It's not Chicago, right? Erie County. Right, yeah. Let's go. And um, so, in I Quince, really, yeah. Quince Space yeah. is a, uh, Quince is an ancient Roman fruit that if you eat it out of hand, it's actually poisonous right off the tree. So if you peel it and boil it down, it goes from this bright yellow vibrant color to this red uh, amber color that you can see. And uh, it becomes really kind of sweet and uh, it pairs really, really well with almost every cheddar that we can come up with. I haven't tried a cheddar cheese in Quince space that I haven't liked, um, but uh, that's, Kind of where the, the, the quince comes from, so it's kind of a little neat history there. Right, and it has citrus seed notes, and Tom and Quince Base, uh, there's a purely local pairing because the from local milk, local fruits that grow in there. And I think this is a really interesting combination. I love the velvety uh, uh, texture of this wine and the fruity notes, and Tom is, always has that kind of st stone fruit like uh, taste with uh, a, a, salt, a salty but um, like candied nuts almost, you know, palm keys. And then so uh, I, I hope you enjoy this pairing. And then palm is always good with this uh, quiz base. Yeah. That is so good. And they both age about four months, right? Four months, yeah. yep. Okay. And sometimes we add uh, element like quiz base or jam in, on the cheese when we um, uh, have it with wine because that element usually will uh, bridge Notes, you know, bring the notes. Yeah, could enhance, you know, your elevate your experience when drinking this wine. I think the pineapple comes out even more than that. Yeah. The, the cheese is the two working together is, is beautiful. 
and the chamomilla is more of a buttery taste to it yeah. than mm -hmm. what, what the tom is. The tom is more of a salty note. So both of these pairings work in either direction with the wine, depending on what you were looking for for a taste. Exactly. It's really cool. It's really neat to see how the different cheese takes the wine mm -hmm. in a different direction. Right. It's really, really cool. So is it Quince? I, I, had, I, I guess I haven't seen a lot of Quince trees, but it, it, when you see the fruit, it's, it almost looks like a little pear. Yeah, it right? looks like a peanut yeah. pear. Okay. It's very, very hard, and then you have to really <laughs> with a very sharp knife, and, and feeling it is hard too. I, I love working with Quince, and then uh, you can poach red wine mm -hmm. and then um, you could use it as a side dish for your maybe grilled pork chops you know? okay. because it's a uh, it has that uh, 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 almost like rhubarb like you know when it's not uh, sweetened with any uh, honey or uh, uh, what do you call it uh, sugar it's, it's beautiful it has some fruit but it has some And um, uh, just a little quick um, uh, note on this, uh, Tom, when you get the wedge, I would suggest, you know, you cut from the side, you know, and then if you get the big wedge, you cut in a smaller wedge, and then you cut the end, and then you cut it this way, so you will get a nice triangle. So the shape of the cheese uh, that you have on the plate will follow actually the shape of the portion of the cheese. So, um, uh, you know, try, I know what we see a lot is uh, cheese and cut in cube-like. It's, it's as easy and it is kind of, but this is also following the block, large block cheeses, right? This one is this shape, and then when you cut it to wedge, you cut it, this is uh, a portion that you will, you will have, and then you, you cut into section. Always so, leaving a little bit of rind. Yes, actually, uh, some rind like Tom is very dry, very thin. Um, Nelson took really great care of this cheese, so you, you can eat it actually. It's, to me, it tastes like oats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then it's, uh, it's nothing but the cheese itself, the rind, but sometimes the rind can get too leathery, very thick, and then too old, and then you don't want to eat it. You, know, you don't want to enjoy the rind, you want to enjoy the cheese. And um, so uh, it depends on what how to write a lot, you know? Uh, but I have a customer who came to the shop that uh, said, oh, I'll eat all the rinds, and then I'll leave the, the cheese to my, for my roommate. <laughs> <That's crazy. laughs> and the rind is so old and leathery, and you love this kind of funky, <laughs> uh, super smelly, thick rind. So, so who knows, right? I mean, um, <laughs> looks like people are loving the quince taste. That's, uh, <laughs> yeah, the quince taste is delicious. And if you have quince paste, you can also glaze it on your pork chop or with rosemary or it's, it's just, it's a, a gem, right? But it has that citrusy notes and um, it, it's really great with, with, uh, with cheese. In Spain, they uh, pair it with manchego a lot. Are we ready for the next one? Yes. Spectacular. All right. And we have sweet escape. Try this. This is um, 
something interesting, something that we thought we would try, and something that we may do again. Um, moving past the fact that, um, you know, obviously there's a little bit of peach and, and raspberry in this. Um, you know, this is a fun, lemony, crisp, refreshing, and easy drinking wine. Um, uh, it's, it's, you need to sit outside, honestly. Uh, I think maybe you can take your phones back out there with you. We, we obviously can't, but this is, this is an outdoor wine. Um, it's very easy drinking, though it is sweet. Um, it's not too much. It's very consistent start to finish. Um, it does linger a little bit. And I'm glad you guys enjoyed this one, because I know that the cheese with this is, is not what people may expect, I think. Yeah, actually, um, oh, do you, can I pick them up? Please? Yeah, no, 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 no. actually, uh, this is, to me, remind me of very aromatic, fruity, um, yeah. coral, it's the uh, sauterne line, but much lighter in a way, and it's great with blue cheese, and then this blue cheese actually is not uh, intensely blue, it, it's a triple cream blue created in, um, in Germany, in South, in Bavaria area. So, uh, so it's the blue is not intense, and the saltiness and the creaminess. It's this great summer blue type uh, cheese that pair well with this wine. And um, the the shape of the cheese, uh, it's round. Uh, I don't have the, the, the piece, but uh, the rind has a gray mold. It's really beautiful. And uh, I think it's one of my favorite pairing. And when we tried it, I just love the uh, how they uh, kind of uh, they came each other. Yeah. They really, they really yeah. do. Yeah, um, that is the creaminess. It, it, it has a little bit of blue blue, blue cheese mm -hmm. flavor, but the creaminess is just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. It has really a neat cheese. It's a neat cheese. Mm -hmm. This so, this cheese also pairs really well with uh, uh, maple syrup. So if you drizzle a little maple syrup or a little uh, if you infuse the maple syrup with a uh, red chili flake and then drizzle it over that cheese, that, that pairs really well with it too, just to kind of amplify it, just just that extra notch. Um, yeah, the that is really good. That the, <laughs> yeah, the idea of uh, contrasting, you know, the, um, the salty element of the blue cheese. Blue cheese has a little more salt than uh, regular cheese. And then with the sweetness of maple syrup or sweet of a honey is great with the blue cheese as well but it just depends on what kind of blue cheese and the sweetness of the uh, syrup should be uh, you have to balance it with the uh, the intensity of the blue and i think uh, that's why blue cheese is always a perfect perfect match with the uh, like uh, uh, uh what is roquefort with sauterne for example or um uh, what else like the a port with uh, stilton. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so those are the idea. But those are very intense, uh, intense blue, blue and intense uh, sweetness of the uh, port white wine, right? Yeah. But uh, this one is just perfect summer wine, like you said. Yeah. Summer the, the wine is a little kind of softer and lower key, yeah. and, the, and the cheese is just perfect to go with it. Neither one overpowers the other. It's not, uh, not like your normal fruit wines. It's not. Uh, yeah. It's not what people may expect, uh, especially going from what we've done in the past. Um, you know, it's it's very easy going. It's um, it's got the fruit coming through. Um, it does have a little bit of a kind of a floral note too that you, you had mentioned before too. And I think with that blue cheese, this kind of exemplifies um, a little bit hides the fruit a little bit too. It's nice. That one kind of really really good. Yeah. How's everybody out in TV land doing? <laughs> They're a little quiet, Mike. I'm a little quiet? No, They're they quiet. are. They're quiet? Well, there's Dean. Hi, Dean. <laughs> we do have four wines to go. It is early. This is true. Well, you know, we, might, we might get them out of the shop. <laughs> are we ready to go to the Flushing Willow? So, as you know, we uh, every spring try to feature a new rosé wine. Um, and this year we did a, we, we kind of brought back an old favorite. Uh, we've had uh, White Merlots on the shelf in the past, but I think if you are familiar with them, we, they've always been a little on the sweeter side. And this time we, we wanted to go a little bit drier without it being uh, too acidic or too edgy. 
Um, and we really wanted to have a nice silky texture with this wine. And I, I think uh, I think AJ hit it right on the right on the head. It just has this beautiful texture to it. Uh, it's got some nice body, but yet it still is refreshing and, and spring like. Can we, can we talk about Merlot without mentioning sideways? Is that possible? <laughs> um, I, well, I don't want to count that one because I'm not. Uh, I, I think if people give this a, a chance, it's not what everyone's expecting. Um, you know, Merlot's always gotten a bad name and a bad rap. And in all honesty, a movie will do that to you. It'll drop your industry quite large. Um, but this isn't what everyone will expect. Um, you know, when you go to uh, other places and, and the wine store, you, you may find stuff um, that'll say white Merlot, and it, it, if you've had it before, it's not going to be like this. Um, this is pure and simple, light and grape speak for itself, um, but also, uh, you know, trying to do a rosé method. Light skin contact with juice um, gives us a more realistic flavored wine, a more, um, a more ripe, I should say. Um, but we'll dive into this one. Um, I really enjoy this wine, especially the with the, the cheese that we selected. And um, Nelson can show the uh, this is the wet. It, it just comes in about 16 pounds wheels. It's, very, it's quite large, 16 to 18 pounds, and it's a hybrid of cheddar and Parmesan. And the cheese is soaked in the Merlot, so it gives that kind of fruity aroma. It has a creaminess, slightly tangy, and nice sweetness and and um, and has a, a grit to it, so like a little mm -hmm. texture, uh, because of the the way it's made, you know, the, the breakdown of the enzymes and protein causing that kind of high in, in the cheese. So the cheese um, won multiple World Cheese Awards and very very consistent from family in Wisconsin, um, Sartori family actually. And um, so yeah, I hope you enjoy that. And this is really really like this pairing. Um, and I really like the wine. So. It, it really, uh, the texture of the cheese and the texture of the wine is really, really cool. No, I think if we, if we move past the port wine cheese of the 90s, I think, how often do you actually see the wine being used in cheese making? How often? Yeah. Um, quite a lot, actually. Yeah. Yes, a lot. And, um, yeah, I mean, uh, in France, for example, a lot of this washed wine cheese is washed with some wine to create that stinkiness, you know? And, um, yeah, I mean, sometimes, you know, when uh, making a cheese maker, sometimes they, um, uh, there's a, some kind of saturation point, you know, you, uh, once you develop a cheese and you're successful with it, you know, uh, you need to be, you want to be creative. It's like this Bella Vitano, actually there's a base for it, and then uh, the, the maker uh, decided to, you know, have this Merlot and then Espresso, there's Balsamico, so they're, uh, but the base of it is the same thing. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's a, it's a, I think a rosemary or something like that maybe that we had at one of our other events okay. uh, yeah. once before that oh, yeah. was very popular. But, uh, no, that, that's, a, that's a lovely cheese. Yeah, that's so good. I, I really like the Merlot soak on the outside. It just uh, gives it a little bit of tanginess. I Not what you expect, you know, to get to get a a white merlot that isn't overpowered with sweetness, and to have something that's a little bright, a little citrusy, um, and a little bit heavier than I think most people may expect on this one too. It's it's got some body to it. I think that's why it's able to to stand up with that uh, melatonin. And this might be a good time to mention. Uh, I we. We'll continue to have uh, these cheeses and these wines in stock for a little bit. So if people didn't get all the pairings or they got one and then they you know, fell in love with a particular one as a result of this or any time later, stop by the winery. We will have, we'll try to keep these cheeses around for a little bit while and they'll continue to be available on the website as well. So. On to the reds. We 
are headed down to the southern hemisphere. We're headed down to Chile. Many of you uh, club members know that uh, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of Chilean wines, and we tend to do a lot, a lot of wines from grapes grown in Chile. Uh, this particular wine even has a little bit more uh, nearness and dearness to my heart, perhaps, than many others, because uh, the label uh, that CJ designed, and it's very, very cool, actually has uh, the artwork on the label was photographed by my daughter when we were down in uh, Valparaiso a couple years back. Uh, Valparaiso, Chile is known for their street art, and this is a part, this label actually has a, a picture of a, uh, I guess it's a, is it a gecko or a lizard perhaps, I'm not sure, uh, painted on a stairway. When you walk through the streets of Valparaiso, there's just this beautiful street art painted on all the buildings throughout the entire city. It's just it's very, very cool. Uh, so we thought we would kind of take that uh, theme and we named this wine Bueno Ande. Bueno Ande literally translates to uh, good vibe, yeah. I believe it is. Just good vibe, good time. Um, and, that, and that just seemed appropriate for this wine. It's uh, it, it, Technically it's a kind of a Bordeaux blend wine, but yet it's uh, a little bit on the uh, medium body side. It's not overly overly big, um, and it's just a nice transition into the, into the red. No, and I think, um, I think this is one of those, um, this is one of those fun wines. Um, one of those fun reds where, you know, something like this you'd expect to be very heavy, and it really expresses Chile's, Chile's wine region. It's a very hot area, um, but what's nice about it is, is it creates a little bit of a, a lighter body wine. Um, very flavorful and very impactful, um, but if it wasn't for Chile, you know, wine wouldn't be the where it is today. Um, this does have a good bit of Carmenere, and um, you know, Carmenere is one of those grapes. Um, say uh, early 1900s, actually late 1800s too. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, uh, phylloxera and um, crop damage caused uh, Carmenere to be pretty much non-existent in France. Um, and it wasn't until you know, the late 1960s, I believe, 1970s, where um, a couple of farmers decided to test some of the um, Merlot grapes that they thought they had been growing and uh, shortly realized it was Carmen here. Um, so it's, it's kind of an homage to, you know, Great Lion. I mean, that's, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have some of the stuff we have today. So it's pretty amazing. But So we should say this is a blend of uh, primarily Carmen here, but it has Cab Franc. Syrah, and it also has a kind of a local Chilean grape uh, that I'm gonna, gonna butcher the name, but it's uh, Pais, uh, which is kind of a lighter body, um, kind, of, kind of a, makes a, a lighter, thinner, acidic yeah. style of wine, but it gives it a little bit of backbone, which is, which is really sort nice. of a mouvet, I would say. Sort mm -hmm. of a, like a mouvet. Um, you know, this is a very, very light, nice, jammy wine. It's a tart, but slightly fruity. Um, there is quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of jam going on here, um, which I think gives it a little fun for you guys to mess around with. Right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. One thing I love uh, doing this with Mike. I love to hear his story going traveling. <laughs> it's so much fun and listening to you know in wine there are like four hundred volatile chemical. Anyway, so that's why you can describe the uh, the, uh, uh, the the taste in a so wider spectrum than the cheeks, for example. But it's always fun to uh, to you know to learn this, you know, from the wine makers. And the uh, uh, this wine has this uh, spiciness to it. And then uh, what? How how did it come about? And uh, just question the, the how the yeah, this, where does the spiciness? Yes. Come? There is some Syrah in it, Syrah, which yeah. typically will give you kind of some black pepper mm -hmm. type of notes, um, but it also is probably a little bit of the toast in the barrel yeah. as well. Uh, but I think it's probably it's it's kind of okay. a little bit yeah. oaky, yeah. but not overdone. It's not overbaked at all, uh, which some New World wines can be. Right. Uh, but this one really lets the fruit yeah. be the be the forefront. So yeah, normally with Syrah is uh, kind of spicier, and then we want to match it. Uh, the intensity with this uh, cheese that uh, we pair here, which is pecorino papado. The pecorino papado is sheep milk cheese. Pecorino, the word pecorino means uh, uh, sheep, pecora in, in Italy. 
Italian language. You see there's a peppercorn here, and sheep milk is very uh, uh, high butterfat content, it's very creamy, and I like the, the pepper, the black pepper there, and uh, punctuate the, the taste, and um, uh, we thought it would, it would be a good match with this wine. And also we have uh, Jita Wang Wek. Now, so you want to talk about how did we make this? Yeah. So this is one of the ones cheeses that we make in house at Reverie Creamery. Uh, during the cheese making process, we infuse a Jatan uh, or caraway seed tea and caraway seeds in the cheese, and then we age it for four months um, during that time. So the little you can see the the different uh, development of the cheese through through with the different seeds in there. Um, so the, the caraway taste kind of amplifies through, and this cheese also pairs well with a, a beef on wick sandwich. And uh, uh, this one to me is one of the favorite ones, not only to make, but also to eat. Um, it's just, it's, it's not a high seller in our store, but it, it is just a unique cheese that is local to our area and local to our taste. And it's just, it just excites me. I feel like uh, a little panini with just maybe one little slice oh, of yeah. beef in it and that. And yes, and yeah. Grow. A little horseradish cream sauce. Oh, yeah. There you go. And a little oh, salad. So salad. So oh, yeah. Like open face. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yeah, I think this is uh, uh, very herbaceous, you know, and and then, um, but I think because the quality of the milk with this, is, this is, and also I love this, uh, the way uh, the progression of this pan. It's almost like yeah. the meal, the meat, you know, uh, the, uh, one course of the, the meat. In the middle of progression, uh, progression um, tasting. So, as you notice too, the uh, the rind is natural rind, just like uh, most of our cheese. This is the art of avinage, which is the finishing of the cheese, uh, which is um, uh, re which requires um, an environment like a cave. You know, you have to have a certain uh, humidity, certain temperature, and airflow, so the cheese will uh, uh, create that. Beautiful ride, natural. I said beautiful. I don't want to break, <laughs> but, I, but I just think that that's a great right job. It. <laughs> so great. it's uh, uh, yeah, there are times when we uh, we uh, have to fight with the change of the uh, season, where the increased humidity. What do we do? We have to decrease the humidity or increase the humidity. So just to get the balance, you know, it's not easy. That's how. Actually, what separate a, a cheese maker, you know, farmhouse that you can make the cheese, but aging the cheese is the art, the avinage, you know, the finishing the cheese, and that's uh, very very tricky. And then uh, all cheese that has natural rind, that's very very uh, specific, you know, and the method, technique, and environment. And then there are some farmhouse cheese that uh, very uh, simple to make, you know, like you can make the cheese and you can uh, put it in a package seal and cargo pack, you know, and then put it on the shelf for uh, months, two months, you might become young cheese. And then cheddar, for example, some of the block cheddar, uh, you, they do that, you know, you put it in the plastic and age it for 12 years. They're good, you know, because it takes that long to, to, uh, uh, to age, you know, but this cheese, in a matter of four months or six months, if you do it right, uh, the cheese itself will, will express the quality of the milk. The milk here is nothing but grass. Good, really good grass that uh, we have in Western New York. So, uh, so four months, you can have its intensity and you can taste the quality of the grass. So as you age cheese, mm -hmm. I wanted to Anne have this question. Sometimes you get that crystals mm -hmm. in the cheese. Mm -hmm. What causes that? Yeah. Okay. Through the through, uh, okay when the cheese is uh, aged and uh, there is an enzyme uh, and uh, in the and then bacteria, good bacteria, microflora in the milk uh, that break down the protein, the long chain amino acids got broken down into tiny little pieces and then they become uh, the call it's called tyrosine. Tyrosine is the name of that crystal. People always say the salt crystal is wrong, it's not correct. It's called tyrosine. Tyrosine is the amino, uh, uh, residual amino acid protein that break uh, broken down by the enzyme and bacteria through the long aging process. 
So generally, if all the conditions are right, the longer it ages, the more yes. you get? Yes, yeah, okay. yeah. And uh, several cheese, like different technique, like cheddar, for example, the way it's made, uh, uh, great, uh, it's, uh, you, you can, uh, uh, Parmesan, for example, you can, uh, you can uh, find that. Uh, long aged Gouda, 24 months, 26 months, you find those crystal, you know, I mean, uh, younger cheese, normally you wouldn't find that. Great question. And then um, uh, <laughs> I can't take credit. That was from Ann. <laughs> awesome. Uh, are we ready to go on to my favorite wine? Oh, it's, it's my favorite. <laughs> young, oh, yeah. Uh, you can share it. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have it at home. <laughs> I, I like this wine a lot, but then I heard what Rico served with it, and then I was really jealous. <laughs> so this is uh, Champion, Champion. It is an Italian wine, 100% uh, Negro Amaro grape. Obviously not a grape that we've heard of uh, very much. Um, it comes from uh, Puglia region of Italy, which if you're looking at the, the boot, it's the, down in the heel. So uh, kind of southern uh, Adriatic, right? Side of Italy. Um, it tends to be not super big and full body, but really, really deep, dark, uh, almost black in color. Um, and this one, this one actually, this particular wine made with the Negro Amaro um, has just a really interesting mix of dried fruit, fresh fruit, a little bit of spice. Um, it just, just, just this, a really neat this, this is the definition of world wine. Um, and for those of you that, you know, I, we've gone over it before here, but, um, you know, when we talk about old world, new world wines, um, old world kind of being, you know, France, Italy, um, more commonly Spain as well, uh, new world more being the Americas, um, you know, we kind of talk about the difference between the wines, and I think this wine really showcases that difference. Um, you know, it's, it is a dry, yet bold, and in-your-face wine. Um, and I think the fruit condition here being extremely tart and jammy um, kind of leads us to, to see why these wines are, are slated as old world. Um, they're a little bit different in style than what we may be used to nowadays. I mean, even, even right up front, it has that kind of old, old fruit, old, old feeling to it. I mean, it's, it's got that age. Yeah. Um, I think it's got a real tartness about it with a cranberry style. Um, kind of, I think we talked about chutney on that one, right? Yeah, we talked about a cranberry chutney with that, but no, it's, a, it's an interesting, interesting one. Something you don't see off of that. I, yeah, this is my favorite. I really like this wine very much. And then I love that light spiciness, you know, very Sicilian wine almost, you know, almost very rustic tasting. That's probably what they would call old world wine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so we pair this with Wanderer. Wanderer is this uh, cheese that we uh, washed, the rind is washed with, with um, a local porter from Mayville, the Inlet Brewing Company, a small micro, uh, it's a micro brewery nearby. And then, so Nelson can talk about the washing process. But uh, Wanderer um, is an Alpine style. Uh, it's, Appenzeller style, actually, and then, uh, but usually in, up in, in Switzerland, the style of cheese usually is washed with wine, with herbs, with uh, spices, you know, secret blend. But you want to uh, have something original, has a reflect a local uh, uh, taste, and then local, it will be made a beer, so wonder, you know, and then um, wonder is a uh, uh, so Wonder also won some awards in New York and American Cheese Society. And we paired it with this uh, uh, onion confit, which is a recipe that we made, uh, that made in uh, Vermont. We have it in Prairie as well. Um, just caramelized onion with honey and those kind of seed. And uh, Nelson can talk about the washing process or it made. So the, the washing process of the, the beer we wait uh, until about the cheese, the, the, the wanderer is aged for a total of six months, but uh, the first month 
we just let it sit without any washing process at all. That way it, um, it starts to form a rind naturally. And then we take a, a brush and we literally brush the beer onto the outside of the cheese. And we do it twice a week. That way you do one side and then that way it doesn't stick to the board when you have a wet product sticking to the board in high humidity. And so we do one side and then we'll flip it and then we'll do the next side the next day. And uh, we'll do that from month two through uh, the start of month five. And then the last three or weeks, four weeks of the pro aging process, we don't wash it anymore. That way it doesn't become tacky and it becomes uh, nice and smooth um, that way. And uh, so as the longer the cheese ages and the more you add the beer to it, uh, the quarter beer, the local quarter beer that we wash on it, uh, it becomes this dark caramel color on it instead of the, the bright white the creaminess of the cheese. And so it just, as it ages over time, it gets darker and adds more of the, the beer notes and flavors and stuff to that. Yeah, and um, it has a nutty uh, notes to it and very savory, almost like cured, cured meat uh, taste. I love the, you have to eat the whole thing. You know, the rind, there's no mold basically. Even with this mold, you can't eat it, but this one, practically there's no mold. It's just the, the crust created by the porter. And that's the, uh, the, the firmness of that uh, near the, uh, at the uh, under the rind. It's really delicious to me. It's very um, nutty and um, uh, remind me of a, like, a, like a salami, you know, uh, the taste, the aroma a little bit, you know. Like a, I love that. I mean, mm -hmm. it has so much depth of flavor to it. It kind of has a, its own little savoriness to it as well. A little sweetness. cheese and the onion confit and roasted it all off together one time. That sounds good. Had a little roasted red, roasted red skin wow. potatoes and, and rosemary on it. <laughs> Did it all that way, so. Wow. Um, that was that one down? Agent's <laughs> <laughs> written all kind of recipes there. And this is the, the, the beer, we should say, is from a local brewery right mm -hmm. in Mayville. I know we have several people online right now from Chautauqua County, mm -hmm. so welcome. And uh, it's, uh, the, the brewery's name is Bacon Lab. Brewing company in Mayville. Yeah. And they're pretty new. They've been around a couple years. Three maybe? years, I think. Oh, okay. Three, three years. Two, yeah, three five, years, five, somewhere in there. All right. Awesome. So shout out to them as well. Great people, <laughs> yes. And then great beers as well. That was so good. That's my favorite one. Agreed. Sacrifice anything with that. 
Um, and I think that's exactly what this is. People will be very surprised that this is a massive group on uh, and I, it's very enjoyable. Um, this is even maybe one of those reds that you're looking for a, a sipper outside like today. Um, you know, it's very fruity, very easy drinking. Um, you really don't even have to have food with this one, to be honest with you. I mean, grab some cheese, sit outside, glass of wine, you're good. I think yeah. this is a great one. Yeah, and uh, we pair this with uh, fromage de Dauphinois in the, from France. Uh, it's, uh, it's very creamy, it's not a brie. It's a, uh, the technique is very different than brie making. And uh, they use this uh, technical ultra filtration, basically removing the water content, so intensifying the, the quality of the cream. And it's this double cream type of uh, soft ripened cheese. It's not a brie, but it is a fromage da Pinot, which is cream cheese. It's very un unusual pairing. And then I thought, why not just put something creamy and Nelson can tell what it tastes like. And it is really has some, almost like an ice cream, basically. But it's I, the, you notice like creaminess from top to, from right to right, basically. The brie is not the same way. So, so when we, Rico and I did our own little pairing of it the other day, the very first thing I thought of when we tried this cheese with this wine was that it was a raspberry sundae. And that was the, that was the first thing with just the creaminess of the cheese and the, the fruitiness of the wine. I was like, this is just a raspberry sundae waiting to happen. <laughs> so uh, we added raspberry hibiscus also from Blake Hill in Vermont. Really great company that we collaborate. And that we'll, the one that makes the uh, our um, onion confit. Uh, this raspberry hibiscus is, is not sweet. It just nice acidity and brightness. And then um, you can use whatever jam you have at home, raspberry or whatever. A lot of uh, uh, bright red. Uh, berries uh, will be good with this type of cheese and with this wine, of course. You're right, that really just, just, just pumps everything up with that little bit, of, little bit of raspberry. Oh, that's so good. It's rich. So, when we, when we speak of cheese, we talk about double cream, we talk about triple cream. Mm -hmm. Help me understand, what is, what is that referring to? What does that mean? It's, a, it's just additional uh, extra cream in the making of the, the, the cheese. You know, there's a, a full milk. Um, brie normally is made with the full milk, just straight, you know, and then if you add more cream, it's become much creamier, you know, and then um, triple cream is super creamy. It's almost like a ice cream, you know, very. So it's the percentage of milk to, to yes. heavy cream? Yes, yes. yeah. yeah. Okay. Add, Happy cream into I see. it. Yeah, I see. Cream is basically, uh, I think everybody knows about this, but uh, yeah, it's just a uh, uh, depend. Uh, some cows uh, has a higher butter fat content, for sure, Jersey has the highest butter fat content. Uh, some of the rare breed, like uh, uh, Guernsey or Ayrshire, also has a higher butter fat content than Holstein. Holstein is the one that. You see mostly the black and white, but Jersey is the uh, brown honey color, you know, of cows, they're very mellow. And of course, I didn't learn all, I didn't know all this when I was living in the city. Now, <laughs> since I've been studying cheese making, traveling to Vermont, I just, I really enjoy learning, you know, uh, finding out about uh, breeds of, uh, of uh, cows. And each breed really uh, uh, create a, a gift that, uh, a definite uh, flavor or intensity in the in the level of the uh, what the, the, the fat uh, in, in, in the milk. Yeah. So, yeah. so Holstein uh, cows usually the, the milks are for uh, drinking milk, and then uh, uh, Jersey and others, you know, the high butter usually they take the cream out and uh, make butter or add it into the cheese into a triple cream or double cream. Soft ripe and cheese. Interesting. I always thought free was either double or triple cream. I didn't realize it's technically either. Yeah, or? just a full milk uh, okay. type. You know, um, you yeah, can make that. I mean, it's a. It, there's no really a. You can make a, a double cream free. You can do that, but uh, a lot of this commercial.
commercial type brie that you will see is very supple and kind of rubbery and thick rind in a like, commercial type. Um, um, it, it, it's meant to be. Uh, ha it's made for, created for, uh, designed for a longer shelf life and travel. So that's why they created that. And then um, the more delicate uh, cheese like this, you know, it, it really has a shorter shelf life. And then they're, that's why they're very delicate and uh, get ripened very quickly as well. I'm just traveling because you probably people will be seeing if anybody had any questions out there. And the, the question is, why do the wine bottles always empty so quickly? But uh, I, I don't have an answer for that one. But it's a There's problem. A in the bottle. It's it's a problem in my house. I can tell you that. So there be a hole in it left in when we bottled it. Just saying. <laughs> I think the technical the technical term is human induced evaporation. Too funny. So, did anyone else have any questions? What was the technical word for the granular feeling in the cheese again? It's tyrosin. It's T Y R O S I N. Tyrosin. Thank you. Well, I guess um, with that, uh, we how do we do on time? We did uh, over about an hour. We said we wanted to be, be keep things timely, so I think we did. That's wonderful. Um, if anybody, we will stay live for a little bit longer. If anybody has any questions, um, but I do. In the meantime, I want on behalf of CJ, Maggie, AJ, Anne, and myself, I want to say thank you to Reverie, to Rico, and Nelson. This was a lot of fun. Yeah. And it, it, I already can't wait for the next time you guys come up. It's always so much fun to have you guys here. So thank you so much. Well, we thank, thank you. Thank you. For, it's uh, an honor for us to be here. It's been a lot of fun. Um, it's been a little bit different format. We all have kind of struggled with this a little bit, and I appreciate our audience's uh, patience as we kind of work this through. Um, hopefully this isn't isn't our new normal. I don't really like that term, but uh, hopefully this won't be our our standard. But we would. Uh, we would ask if anybody has any thoughts or feedback. Uh, please let us know, shoot us an email, uh, what you liked or didn't like about the format. Um, maybe there's something here that we can find a little bit uh, of something constructive. Uh, at least it was something we could do on a, on a beautiful beautiful evening and it's just been great to get together. And, and just, just watching some of the comments and seeing all our good friends and everybody's names, um, it's, it's been a lot of fun just to see. So um, thank you. Stay safe. Anybody else has any, any last words? Thank you. Thank you, guys. We awesome. Nice. We hope to see you soon. So. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you again.